I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Justin Davis and please do support me on my Patreon link down below. Now let's get right to business. We have a new review today for you. This is the Exovon X218S. It is a five inch race quad and we're gonna take this out of the box. I'm gonna show you what's included on this frame. I'm gonna show you what's a little bit different about it. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons and I'm also gonna give you some tips on setup. If you bought this quad, this is gonna be a great review for you. So after we're done doing that in the studio, we'll go outside, we'll do a little bit of line of sight flying with it so I can show you how it flies on a 4S 1300 and after that we'll do some FPV. Okay guys, let's just hop right into this quad and we'll talk about the specs first. Uh, it is a pretty impressive quad with the specs and I also like that it has a lot of TPU mount stuff on here. We've got motor bumpers on here. We have a TPU mount for a run cam style camera in the front, but that's not actually the run cam. It's that sort of uh, furry bee clone camera that we've seen before on quads. And it is a CCD camera, one third sensor in there and a 2.3 millimeter lens. So uh, that's the lens that everybody wants on the quads right now. And the soldering on the side, it looks okay. It doesn't look super great. Maybe the the uh, solder grade looks a little bit maybe mid-grade. I wouldn't say it's a super high-grade solder. Uh, I do like the fact that they included some braided cord around the motor wires. So that's really nice. And uh, a little piece of uh, black medical tape around the end out here. You don't really have to cover up these wires with an extra zip tie. They're pretty durable where they are and they feel pretty solid. I don't feel like they're going to come up at all. As a precaution, you could take a, a tiny zip tie included in the kit and just put around that arm. Uh, also, speaking of the arms, they are 200. 18 millimeters from motor to motor and they are replaceable arms on here so that's pretty cool they're also four millimeters thick now on the end of each arm we are swinging a 2306 and they are branded sky stars right there and they are let's see what kv 2500 kv it does say that this flight controller can handle up to 6s but i'm not sure that these motors can so uh, you guys might want to look up do a little further investigation on these motors before you decide to run them on 6s um, i would safely run this one for no problem now what i did notice about this quad is that when i set it up in beta flight it did have the latest beta flight on here it was running 3.3 and and that's great that's really nice you can turn on dynamic filtering and all that good stuff the PIDs seem to be okay. They were they seem to be a little bit high, so I might end up having to tune this at the field. Uh, but the rates were set up to about 85, which is super high for me, and I usually don't fly over 80. So, and also on the back, it has a really nice sort of uh, right-hand circular polarized shorty antenna right there with a TPU mount. It's just another TPU addition that they added with this quad. But I think for the price. And if you watch this review and, and go over the things that I'm going to tell you about this quad for the setup, I think you'll have a pretty nice quad. Um, I think the price right now is like $180, including a receiver. So it does come with an XM Plus style receiver, which when I remove this VTX right here, it has a 30.5 by 30.5 mounting point and an MMCX connector on there. Nice VTX, but I did remove it and put the HDLRC VTX on there uh, mainly because I had some noise issues with this one and the reason was is that when I turned on I tried two different sets of goggles as well black lines going through the screens um, and I tried moving things around in here sometimes you have um, an antenna cable coming too close to your power cable so I moved the power cable on the outside of this post right here to get it really far and away from this antenna cable I also swapped out the MMCX connector cable for a brand new one and I also tried another AX2 antenna on here just to see if I would still get that black lines across the screen and uh, I did so I happened to get a bad one of these now if you get this and you have a lot of black lines going through let GearBass know I would send them an email and let them know that uh, it is occurring if you can send them a video that's probably best for their tech support maybe they'll send you out a new VTX but um, right away I had issues with this VTX and I looked up the manual on this VTX and it's actually quite a nice VTX because it is switchable between 25 milliwatt 200 and 600 milliwatt and the power button is on the side right here up at the very top and you can switch channels and bands down here and you can see three LED lights on the very top of it so if you press and hold this 
while you plug in the battery, and this is the way you're going to change the power, you're going to have to hold this while plugging in your battery at the same time, and you'll see a U pop up on here. That means that this VTX is unlocked. So once you do that, then you can press that button again, hold it for two seconds, and it'll switch back and forth between these LEDs. One little red light right there is going to be 25 milliwatt. The next one up is going to be 200, and all three at once is going to be 600 milliwatt. And you've got six bands and 48 different channels to choose from for this particular VTX. And if you're looking up the manual on it, you want to type in Google EWRF E709T M3. That is the model number of this VTX right here. And I'll just show you a close up of that. And it can also handle up to a 4S battery, which is pretty awesome. It has a voltage range of six to 25 volts. So uh, if you get one of these, you'll have actually a pretty good VTX with an MMCX connector and all the uh, bells and whistles on here. I just happened to get uh, a bad copy of one. So uh, I went ahead and pulled that off. And uh, thanks to HGLRC, I'll try to put a link down below for them for um, helping me out for this particular review. Now you're looking at this quad from the side and you can see they do have dampeners in there. Those are those blue rubber grommets right there in between the two posts. And uh, that's an F4 flight controller. And uh, I, you know, like I said, I did check it out in beta flight. It is running 3.3, that's great. It does have a USB port there for hooking up to beta flight and flashing the firmware if you need to or just changing up your switches and setting up your switches in the modes tab. Uh, also on this side, you'll notice there's a little slot just below the VTX. That is for your black box recording data. So you can put uh, a micro SD card in there and record all your data from your quad down to that card and uh, take a look at how your motors are performing, your ESCs and everything else uh, coming from the quad. All the data will be saved to that. So this is the box that you get when you order this quad and mine looked to be a little bit damaged on arrival so mine got pretty banged up uh, on the DHL courier so uh, DHL take it easy on my stuff if you would. Um, that might be why my VTX was possibly damaged. Um, you also do get two sets of these blue style props and I'll just show you these the flat profile here. So you can see they're kind of uh, stepped up a little bit and looks like the blades are actually attached right to the center of the hub and these flare up on the ends and it uh, looks like a pretty decently narrow cord toward the center toward the uh, outside edge there and it's um, not a real super aggressive looking prop it looks like they might be actually pretty smooth and those are 50 43 props so uh, two sets of those in the box which is super nice and like i said before you get all these tpus uh, accessories that go along with it and over here on the right hand side we have a carbon plate that goes on the bottom of your battery for a battery protector and the uh, straps just going to go through there and you get an extra beeper and some leds if you want to mount those on the back of the quad that already has a connector on there and you can just plug that in and you're good to go and what i did was i already set it up with ese alarm so i'm kind of emitting that extra weight on the quad you get four smaller zip ties Two pieces of heat shrink here and those are for standing up your antennas off the top of the quad or off the arms whichever way you like to do it you can do it facing out the back some people do it that way you also get four aluminum lock nuts those are for your motors good are going to hold your props down and they do give you a piece of 3m sort of a tacky grip style mount for the bottom of the quad and uh, it's not die cut or anything you might have to cut that to fit but normally what i use is a little bit of velcro on the bottom of the quad usually keeps the battery on there a little bit better whenever i use this type of mount uh, it has really not enough adhesion on here when you have a hard hit and their battery flies off and you lose video so it's really makes it harder to find your quad uh, without any power to it so keep that in consideration i usually put those to the side you also get two longer zip ties which i've already used once and uh, cut back off the quad but those are going to be for your antennas and you also get an xm plus manual for all the different connections on your receiver but since i got the bind and fly this one's already wired up and everything's soldered here. And usually the S bus goes on the left hand far side of this receiver, five volt and then the ground wire. So you're gonna have a yellow one, a red one, and a black wire there. But overall, it's a pretty cool looking quad. It is 218 millimeters and it has some pretty rocking motors on here. So I'm expecting a pretty good freestyle performance out of this. And uh, just to let you know, 
The specs did say that you could run this on 6S. I, I would personally not run this quad on 6S, uh, mainly because the 4-in-1 ESC on here, that board is actually going to be 30 amp ESCs. Um, and generally, I won't run 6S on 30 amps. The motors might be able to handle it, but uh, I would probably only run this quad on 4S 1300 or 1500 battery. It's probably going to be the best bet for this particular quad. But let's go ahead and uh, box up all this stuff put it in my box and we'll drive out to the field. We'll do a little bit of line of sight and some freestyle with this new quad. Here we go. All right, guys, here we are at the field. Let's go ahead and do some line of sight flying with this quad. And I don't have the camera on there now, but I'm gonna put the get up cam up there for our FPV test. And I'll show you some of that footage off the get up cam. It's a pretty nice 4K camera, sport cam, but let's go ahead and plug in the battery. I've got my XT60 back here. I'm just gonna sort of make sure this balance lead right here doesn't get scooped up in the props. Always good to twist that off in between the cables. Give it a couple more twists to keep it out of the props up top as well. The cable itself and the battery cable. And my transmitter's on, so this is the maiden flight. Here we go. Sounds good. I turned up the beeper on the ESCs a little bit louder just in case I have to use them as a beeper. Go ahead and arm it. And this is the stock tune on here. I left all the pids the same. They did look extremely high, but I was flying a, a way different quad yesterday. So um, this is more of a beastie quad with much larger motors. Supposed to be possible for 6S with this quad, but I would stick to four. Try out those roll rates. I could probably go up on that rate a little bit. They had them set to 85 in the super rates, which I thought was pretty high, but seems to have quite a big roll rate on 70. So I might actually turn that up to like 75 or 80. If you want a really snappy roll, just turn up the super rate a lot. Seems to float nice. It's flying pretty good, actually. I was kind of concerned with the pid tune they had on it. So it looks like it might've been handled before I got a hold of it, which is good. And Beta Flight 3.3 always flies pretty good. So let's go ahead and do a punch out. One, two, three. Not too bad. Here it comes. Let's do some throttle bumps there. Cool. It's flying pretty good. It's predictable. I'm just hoping that that BTX is holding up on there. I know that VTX is good, so if there's any static going on, it might be coming from the uh, flight controller itself or maybe the power source coming off the board. Nice. It appears to be flying pretty good, so uh, let's go ahead and come over here to the landing pad. And we'll do a little FPV. After that, we'll do some uh, after flight report for you guys and uh, I give my thoughts and opinions on this one.
All right, guys, we're all done with the flight test now, and uh, I'm going to talk about my opinion about this one and also just go ahead and wrap up this review for you. Well, it did pretty good out there. I did set it down after I flew it the first time and go back inside Betaflight on my laptop, and I changed those super rates from 70 up to 76, and that seemed to bring it to more of an agile sweet spot for my pilot skills. It just seemed to be snappier and do more what I wanted to do. If you're a new pilot, you can set those rates from 85, what are the defaults in Betaflight, down to like 70. It'll just be smoother. It's gonna make a broader roll, uh, but if you want it to be smoother flying, you can turn it down to 70, and that's just gonna do a little bit better for you uh, if you're a new guy. Now, a little bit of advice for running this on 6S. I, I definitely wouldn't run it on 6S. It should be about 1850 kV on these motors to run 6S. Um, 2500 seems a little bit high. Um, you might, um, you might end up hurting these motors or damaging them. So I would probably stay away from 6S and, and run this guy on 4S, something like a 4S 1300. The 1500 is probably gonna get you the best flight time because I did burn through some 1300s pretty quickly. But I gotta say overall, it's a pretty nice quad. I like the frame. The frame seems to hold up pretty well. I did crash it over there in the boulders on the left-hand side of the field over there. And uh, I heard some scratching around when it hit the ground. So I definitely know I made contact with something, some type of rock over there. I chewed up the prop on the back left over here just a little bit, but didn't even break any props, which is pretty cool. And I feel like the camera is really good on here. The flight controller seemed pretty good. It did slip a couple times on the yaw axis so you guys could probably bring these yaw numbers down uh, on the d starting first and then move over to the p bring those numbers down just a little bit and it won't be quite as sensitive they might have it set just a little bit high on the yaw axis when i was coming around inverted it would just kind of wander a little bit um, you can see it in the video if you back it up but that's one way to tell if it's set too high on the yaw axis uh, that you have a little bit of wander coming back around because the, the accelerometer will start to flip out a little bit but like i always say as far as stock props go the, pro the stock props look pretty good but i would just go ahead and fly the cyclone 50 40 props on here you're going to get a much better smoother flying quad out of these props they just work great on a lot of different quads and you guys see me use these all the time they're absolutely great so uh, dow if you're watching I'm just about out of these. I need some more of them. Please send me more. So I would say overall, I think this quad is for intermediate to beginner guys. Um, it is a pretty powerful quad, so it's definitely not going to be your first type of quad. If you're looking for something that has a lot of boost out in the field, a lot of sort of horizontal boost, it has plenty of motor power. I didn't feel like it was underpowered at all, and I didn't feel like um, I couldn't get out of some of the maneuvers that I was coming, like big, long maneuvers down underneath trees and things. I had plenty of power, so I trust the power setup that's on here. And once I replaced my VTX, I got a bad one in the batch, and that does happen from time to time. Um, everything was completely good with that HDLRC receiver on there, and uh, I had no problems with the video system after that. But also, like in the back where it has this little stubby antenna on the back, that's nice. They have a little TPU mount back there holding that in place and those are nice because if you haven't seen that before it's kind of a trend right now these just kind of flex a little bit and it's on a mmcx connector back there so it comes up and around and uh, just make sure that's far away from your power source right there and you'll have a much cleaner video but you're likely not to break this this is just going to kind of bend in the back and it doesn't stick up so far off the top of the quad like a lot of the older style 5.8 antennas. So overall, I'm gonna say this quad is probably about a 4.2 out of five. I think that it did pretty good out in the field. It has pretty good flight characteristics and uh, it does have a nice snappy roll once you turn up those rates to uh, something a little bit higher. It's definitely a race quad or a freestyle machine. But thanks for checking out this review, guys. This is a quad company that I've never seen before, so it's a new brand in my hands, and uh, I'm always looking forward to flying new things on the channel. So take care, guys. I'm Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.